Welcome back to another cast game featuring Give You Anxiety playing as the Mongols versus it says it's Re, but this is really Beastie Q, who is ranked number two on the ladder currently, and he is here playing the Delhi Sultanate. So naturally, I was very interested, had to check out to see uh, how he is going about playing Delhi. The map we have here is Nagari. And uh, Give You Anxiety is if you're playing as the Mongols, considered to be one of the strongest civilizations uh, currently out there on this current balance patch. Now, one thing to consider about this map, you do have the water, which I think Delhi excels at this early water, particularly because a civ like Mongol could typically uh, put out a lot of pressure to deny a dock, but with Delhi, their fishing boats are able to shoot back, so it gives them a great chance on maps just like this. Now, looking at these corner waters, we do have... One deep water fish for BCQ versus the anxiety, give you anxiety, has two out there. So, uh, GUA has got a little bit of an upper hand as far as the water goes, should he decide to go for it. You do see GUA opening with an early stable. So, I do suspect he's going to be going for some early raiding. Uh, perhaps he'll make scouts go try to burn a dock. But man, I, I think that might be a massive mistake if he's planning on coming down here, engaging this fishing dock. Um, dock rather right? i don't want to call it a fishing dock um because those fishing boats are going to fight back so we'll see if that's what ua does have planned so far uh it does look like delhi has opened with five uh villagers on wood so those original five villagers went and built a lumber camp he just now put a six villager on wood after putting four on food as far as the macro goes also brought that that dock builder back home to survive that con there now let's see what gua is up to he's got his two scouts out here, and they're going to be going out. Uh, perhaps, uh, I, I thought he was going to, I feel like he's going to go raid, but I'm not really sure what he's planning on raiding. Is he really going to go for that dock? It makes me really scared if that's what he's going to actually do. But uh, hopefully not, because these fishing boats will deal with that very quickly. Maybe he doesn't realize he's up against Delhi, or just hasn't seen them in a while, because the top of the ladder, probably not a whole lot of Delhi players at the moment. And uh, his scout's chilling back there, not engaging quite yet. Just now putting down that mosque here at uh, just before the 2 minute 30 second mark. Uh, so he can start getting some of those technologies. Now, in case you've been living under a rock, you do know that Delhi really got nerfed during this last patch that happened. Uh, they, there's, there's timings for getting sanctity. It's way, it's way harder because you can't start researching it until the feudal age. Um, amongst other things, their age one and two texts do research a little bit faster, though some of them are actually bugged. I actually made a bug tier list for Delhi, so go check that out on the channel. It's the last video uh, that I posted. It's pretty, it's funny and it's sad at the same time, uh, to say the least. Okay, so let's think about what uh, what Re can do here. Currently has a nice little fish boom going on while the Mongols has invested in this early scouts. Now... Perhaps GOA's plan is just to grab this hunt. Is he going for an early professional scouts or something? Maybe he will in transition. But is it a curious uh, investment here so early on. But they are chilling there. We'll have to see what their plan is. Can't quite predict. Now, as far as the spawn here, this map has been reworked a little bit. It looks much better. Look at this. For the wood lines are not blocking the passage on either side. It's way more open. It feels like a lot more land space. Even though there's only one deep water fish uh, spawn here, there's plenty of fish out here. And in the, the deep water, certainly the, the big pond has plenty. Um, there we go. Here we go. Let's see if he's going to engage us. Maybe this is enough. Maybe GUA has calculated that, that having seven scouts is the number. He can draw some idle time from those boats if he messes with them. But actually, they will passively shoot if, even if they're like gathering here on the sea. And GUA is really investing in these scouts. I almost wondered if he was going to come build a, a tower at, at one point. But, man, is he going to, he, he's not going to engage the dock, right? He's not going to engage the dock. Meanwhile, back at home, uh, the deli, we have a lot of villagers on wood. 13 to be exact. 7 on food and 5 on gold. Dropping a barracks now. I think he knows the scouts are out there. Or he just is planning on doing a little bit of walling here. So he gets that bit barracks down. Doesn't look to be aging quite yet. Does have the gold he needs to age if he wanted to. Just needs to get that food back in, which he will very shortly. Meanwhile, GUA, what's he up to? Is he training more scouts? More scouts on the way. So, oh, oh what is this? What is, oh, hoo, hoo. sneaky, sneaky. So GUA is bringing his town center. He's going to town center, drop the dock. 
This is next level thinking. Man, very impressed with this gameplay. Let's see how this works out for GUA. In come the fishing boats to harass. Let's see if he's able to actually get this town center down. There we go, right up against the shore. Now, one thing to realize here, the boats can just swim to the other side. They can just uh, avoid this whole situation. Um, so we'll have to see if they do uh, go for that. There he goes, going for the garrison of the scouts inside the town center. Now, the Mongol uh, town center drop was nerfed. Can't place it next to enemy's TC anymore. That doesn't prevent you from sitting and putting it on a dock. Okay, he's going to move it a little closer. Now, while this is happening, he is currently idling his his villager production time. So we'll have to see how this pays off. Uh, don't look think he's aging quite yet. Uh, so this was going to be an interesting gamble. Now, GUA seemed to really have this Town Center drop down. It makes me wonder, was GUA practicing Town Center dropping on earlier patches? That was a, a pretty clean build there. Look at the weird little land there. <laughs> really funky. It's kind of terraformed there. Um, but it looks like he is going to be able to take down that dock, which should be a good pickup for him, considering there's currently 10 fishing boats out. But uh, obviously predicted that this was going to happen. He's already gone the other side. He already has a dock. And he's just going to get out of dodge. So while this has cost you a villager production time, I'm afraid this is going to really set him back as far as his economy goes. Um, man, I don't think I think this is the first time I've seen a TC drop here on a on the water. I've got to get a, a, a little view of this. This this might be the thumbnail of this video, guys. Holy cow! So there we go. Takes out that dock with a town center drop. Very clever out of GUA, so let's see how this pays off. Obviously, they're already gathering on the south side, so I'm afraid that investment might be for naught. Uh, and Delhi is in the second age, producing his spearmen. Now, do note, spearmen have two bugs currently on the current patch. They do not brace like they're supposed to. That was one thing that was supposed to change the automatically brace. They don't do that. Um, they're also, the hardened spearmen upgrade takes, I believe, it's like five times longer than it's supposed to. So, two, pa two bugs currently with the spearmen. It looks like GUA has thrown down two docks in the back. Uh, and these scouts are going to pick up a little bit of res if they're able to ignite the outpost on fire. Uh, but uh, the spearmen will deal out a lot of damage against these scouts either way. They're good for the torch damage, but not so good at fighting spearmen. Oh man, this would be great if he was able to get a drop on the second dock. But I'm afraid the spearmen are just going to be enough to uh, discourage the Mongol player from going after... Uh, that dock there with the tower and with the boats would be a little hard. Now let's look at the villager count here. Currently 37 for the Delhi player, 27 for GUA. So, man, uh, obviously the fish boom it has a lot to do with that. Trying to burn that tower, but I don't know if he's going to be successful there. Spears coming in. This could be... Uh, okay, he did run away, losing two scouts there. So... GUA is kind of in a tough spot here. If he is starting to work on his dock, maybe he'll go with some uh, attack ships here in the second age. There is this out defensive outpost that could help secure the water uh, for the Delhi. Meanwhile, we have two barracks currently out on the field. Looks like currently housed at the moment too, building a house there. Um, training any scholars. See, Sanctity is currently being researched and it does look like GUA has reached the second age going up with the deer stones. Now the deer stones will make it so you can see these villagers. They get the nice speed aura boost from this. So they're going to walk a lot faster. But it also makes it so the yam network that can be acquired from building outposts is automatically researched where it's typically only available in the third age and will boost the speed of all units. Man, it's so weird looking. <laughs> okay, what's going on out here? Scout's going in. Uh, just kind of poking around. Not really doing a lot, but man, we're starting to get a, a nice little mass of spearmen. And honestly, I feel like Delhi could, could start to consider maybe even pushing out. But uh, he's in a great spot. Maybe he really has no need to, to go do anything weird. He has to know G8 might be a little bit behind having invested in his scouts, having taken the time to move his town center, uh, delayed some villager production. And obviously, he seems to have good control of the water. If those spearmen do make contact, you do see they quickly will melt any of those scouts. So trying to grab some villagers, I'm not sure if he was able to get any villagers there in that raid. Uh, maybe it's the time GA might start bringing in hunts. Though he does have fish there, so maybe he's fine with it. I know GA does like to go for that advanced, uh, that survival technique sometimes. Or rather, professional scouts, but it doesn't look like he's going for it this time. Now look at that. GA did train an uh, archer ship, as I predicted he might. But those, that's a lot of fishing boats. It was just enough to be able to actually fend off 
Uh, that archer ship, and I think that archer ship may go down. Oh my gosh, escaping with 16 HP. That's a huge win for GUA. He was able to maybe pick off a boat there, uh, I think. So that's, that's a nice nice win for him. And there we go. Delhi using the fact that their spearmen can build walls and uh, building up some wind walls there just to stop any scouts to run in and harass from that side. But the scouts sneak in down south. Here come those sneaky, sneaky scouts. And they're coming down. Let's see what they're going to... Oh, they're eyeballing this. They're the, we want the tower. He's going to go after that tower. They have one spearman sitting there, ready to defend. Maybe go for the house instead, actually. I guess 750 HP compared to the 1,000 of the outpost. Um, so he will be able to ignite that. And there you go. Has picked up some resources from doing that. Yeah, he's going for the tower now. Even though one spearman's poking at him, it, it, you know, th these are the low-cost units. If he's able to pick up a little bit of res by doing this, not to mention distracting his enemy... Like giving him some space, uh, you know, GA is probably enjoying this. Now, a little bit of long distance uh, forestry going on right now. May want to pick up an additional Gur. He was able to stop that tower from dying all the way, but he was able to ignite it, so he did get that resources. What is this? We have three archer ships. Now, there is one Dao, I think, in the mix. Two Dao's in addition to the fishing ships, and, of course, he does have the healing of the dock when he's close to it. But uh, Delhi taking him to task here on water. Let's see if he does escape this time. Okay, I think one archer ship is going to go down. The second one pops out back home. Of course, there's that town center. And bring all those fishing boats idle is probably the, the bigger takeaway there, possibly. Meanwhile, Scout's sneaking in, uh, trying to burn the outpost. And I think he may... I thought he might actually nuke these Scouts to try to commit to the outpost. But he did run away with just a few. Uh, so, I mean, I almost feel like it could have been worth it to sacrifice a few more Scouts to actually kill this outpost. Just because that's helping Delhi really defend the water, same as this town center is kind of doing here on the north side. Now, meanwhile, these spearmen are moving in, and GOA doesn't have any archers out yet. He's building two archery ranges, probably going to move over here to this uh, Uvu, but he needs to buy some time. You see him running back, just trying to draw the forces off, and back in come the archer ships. Uh, but now there are currently three Dows out on the field. In addition to, of course, the fishing ships are able to put out a little bit of damage. Um, and trying to micro that back, did he escape? Well, it does look like both players will escape and then no one harmed. And meanwhile, the Castle Age has been reached for Delhi, going up with the House of Learning. Very curious. As you can see here, Hone Blades will take a total of 15 minutes for him to research. So we've seen a lot of players, including myself, skipping going to House of Learning because this was the biggest benefit of Delhi. Um, but taking 15 minutes to get that is just absolutely wild. Uh, but that is what he's doing. Uh, meanwhile, a lot of scouts. Geo is really committed to all these scouts. Kind of, kind of peculiar. We do have a few archers out, which will start picking off these spearmen. Um, and it does look the scouts are going to go ahead and try to siege something. There we go. Archers taking out spearmen on the back line. But meanwhile, uh, the Delhi Delhi is in the third age and already trained up some man arms, so in a very good position. Look up here at the resources. The GUA does have some uh, res stack. Maybe he's trying to age himself, but Rees uh, moving along. Looks like, look at the villager count. We got a big battle going right here. Hold on, there's a lot of action going on. Lots of fronts, but a lot of uh, spearmen kind of dying up there. Doesn't look like GUA is really able to make any headroom on the sea. Still plenty of uh, fishing going on, and there we go. We got a bagla. Attack ship? Hopefully I said that right. Let me know in the comments if there's another way to say it. And that's going to be very strong against the Uru ship. So this may uh, kind of stop anything that GUA was doing on the water at the moment. And it does look like another outpost coming down to help defend the water. When those man at arms show up, that's going to make a big difference in this fight because a few archers are not going to be a match uh, for, for man at arms uh, at, at least not in these numbers. We need a lot more archers for sure. And there we go. See a few coming down. Uh, I'd be surprised if we don't see uh, Delhi going out and taking these sacred sites maybe here soonish. Could possibly be something he could consider. Uh, meanwhile, look at this. Advancing on the water, taking out uh, the Mongol fleet right now. We do see just the, the, the ballista attack of this uh, Bagla attack ship. Just really doing a good job taking out those uh, archer ships. And is there anyone garrisoned in town center? Look, he's trying to pull some villagers, just trying to save his fleet. But that's drawing a lot of idle time from these villagers. He might save some boats. Um, and I think he might win this fight. 
But, the, uh, you know, a lot of costs tied up in having those resource, those units garrison right now. But I think it might have been a good, good gamble. He was able to sink, I think, all of the Delhi fleet. So, but, I mean, res in the bank. He can certainly make more if he wants to. So we'll have to see. Meanwhile, Delhi pushing in, uh, working in with these archers. But there is his man arms. I think that's going to be a, a difficult unit for him to counter uh, without having a whole lot more archers than he has right now. On the sea, we got Mongols trying to push out again, but quickly stopped by the fishing boats and another attack ship that has been trained. And the archer sitting in the stealth forest, taking some shots, getting some uh, some man arms down, taking one down. Very effective. You know, even killing one with archers is always feels like a, a big feat. Uh, but he is starting to gain in these archer masses. Uh, does he have a blacksmith? Has he got his Texan Q? I uh, don't think so. Not that I'm seeing. Okay, now if you could take out this dock, this would be uh, a good move for GUA. Could maybe give him a chance to just control the water completely uh, and stop this fleet of, of Delhi. If he could just break through on water and siege the docks, maybe that's something he's going for. Uh, but we'll have to see. GUA still sticking down H2. Here we go. Epic battle. We've got battle on the sea, battle on the land, stone tower coming up. But I do think Delhi's going to come out ahead in this, just with the, the fact there's two docks here dealing out healing. Uh, this is just way too costly for a fight for GUA, and in comes the man-at-arms. He's going to have to move back. He does not have the, the advantage of having the extra speed boost that he would get from the Deerstones, aka the, the Yam Network, because he does not have towers out here right now. So if you're in GUA, GUA shoe right now, what do you do? What do you do? I think he's probably quite happy that an age two investment to attack his dock uh, kind of happened here in the North Shore. I think moving over to the South w was not really a huge deal for him and was able to buy him some time that his opponent did invest in that early game military uh, rather than aging up a little bit faster. Sometimes you see Mongols going for a trade route on a map like this, but there's no trade in sight currently for GUA. Let's see what's going on back at home. Uh, 800 food in the bank, 800, I'm sorry, 800 food and 800 gold. But where where is he getting food from? Oh, he's got okay. He's got okay. Yeah, two two deep, deep water fish out here. So he's getting some from his back pond. But look at this. Uh, a lot of attack ships now for Delhi and GUA is being an age behind. It's gonna be really difficult for him to face this down. Um, and I think uh, this might be the end of his fleet here as we know it. Let's see. Healing obviously being uh, dished out at the moment. Uh, trying to spin. Look at that. Spin the spin the winds. Spin the ship to win. That's what they do. Uh, but uh, actually, the docs are he handing out just enough healing uh, that he may be okay here. A uh, good use of the Mongol TC as a defensive replacement. You know, the Mongols don't have keeps. This is uh, maybe a, a valid way that you can hold the water as a Mongol player uh, with some defensive town centers. Meanwhile, a lot of man arms starting to be uh, grouped up. I almost feel like they could just run it. If only he knew, he could almost just run in here right now. Though he won't catch these archers as they will kite back. And maybe he knows that. But once they get sprint, he certainly could. At least for a little bit. What was that? Oh, an explosive Dow. This could be catastrophic to GOA's army. His navy, rather. And there we go. Boom! One, two, three, four ships. I think maybe four or five ships all sunk at one time. And just like that, GOA's fleet has been wiped out. And, uh, you know, kind of a funny little fight. There's only really two fishing boats left for Mongols on water, but he just wants to have complete control of the water so he can continue his fish boob. Uh, he currently has, let's see, seven fishing boats. Doing a little bit of farming back at home. But I feel like this ship, or uh, this game is well within Ree's grasp. Look at that man arm mass. Uh... Let's, I, I mean, I don't think that's going to be enough archers to deal with that. He's just now started training some crossbows. He's very careful. He might rally into those. And I think that we could see if there's a big sprint out of Delhi. It really could uh, decide a fight. But I would imagine he might go straight for sieging some of these archery range. Oh, I heard an elephant. What was that? Did, did, you, did you guys hear that? Man, I can hear that from across the map. There's an elephant somewhere. I swear. I swear. Maybe I made it up. I, I'm telling you. Did you guys hear it? 
Maybe. Oh wait. Oh, I'm. I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting here searching the Mongol player's base for an elephant. It's obviously in Reed's base. But meanwhile, I don't want to look for it right now because we got a man arms charging and using that force march. This is an ability you got to research at the blacksmith. Gives your uh, units a chance to to chase them down. But look at this. The Yam Network, that 15% uh, increased movement speed is just giving him what he needs. He just had to outlast the charge and can just kite. Uh, and crossbows will do a lot of damage against man arms. They were buffed in the recent patch, but not if the man arms get up on them. Yeah, there we go. You got to have a little bit of buffer there. So uh, I think his man arms will be just enough of an issue uh, for GUA because he's starting to sp split up his army, split up his eco. He's also getting attacked on the water. There are elephants sitting here mid-map. Tower elephant. Look at that. Uh, yeah, you know... Glad to see this in a high-level game. Ranked two on the ladders, training tower elephants. But he's also in a considerable lead. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's fine. Uh, but we'll see. Crossbows being trained for GUA, though. So those elephants could be in some trouble if there's a significant mass of crossbows. Crossbows are excellent at countering tower elephants. But look at this. Big mistake. Jay's lose GUA's losing a bunch of villagers there. Uh, trying to garrison. Damn, but oh man, what a great, what a great landmark. This gives a plus 15% gold increase dropped off at this landmark. Also bringing in, uh, oh, 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 oh my gosh, no, no, no. There's not, oh my gosh, going for it. A Wololo in a dream. Oh, I thought he might get, oh, he got, oh, 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 oh. he got five, six of GUA's villagers and his building outpost with them right away. Oh my gosh. I, I do believe this will give him the Yam Network, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think this... Well, I'm not sure. Sometimes, like, uh, uh, capturing an enemy's unit allows you to build their... Okay, it gives them their outpost. I thought it might build the Mongol uh, <laughs> trade post. Maybe they fixed that bug. There were some strangeness with converted units, converting buildings before. Maybe I'm just making things up. But look at that. Tower is up, and now he's basically can idle this gold for some time, but it looks like some siege going on on that tower. I think GUA will take that down, but definitely was not in his plan to have a bunch of villagers slurped up by Wolo, though. Meanwhile, we got units building on the back line. I feel like Rhi is just building up for a massive Delhi push here soon. I don't feel like Elephant's something you would ever see against Mongol very often, because they're so mobile, they can run their whole base, they can run their whole army away from those Elephants pretty effectively. Now we see a town center being dropped on that gold, trying to prevent uh, any more harassment to these villagers. But it looks like they've somehow been stopped from getting inside. Look at that. But we got crossbows in the back line. They are wiping out those men at arms, and they should be just fine uh, to survive this. But let's look at the villager count right now. We currently have 83 for Re versus the 41 of GUA. I mean, man, just an excellent job of keeping pressure on the Mongols, starting with uh, maybe getting the uh, control of the early water there. And then he's just kind of been uh, sieging uh, and running around GUA's base, picking up a few villagers here, converting a five villagers there. And now we have the March of the Elephants. And you know I would be loving to see some elephants in the chat right now. Man, look at that beautiful beast. There's a fight somewhere, but this is way more important. They are coming in. They got men arms behind them. Looks like some crossbows and archers as well. They are ready to go attack the Mongols. Let's see what they can see. This is elephant cam right now. Saddle up. Special camera, special new technology. Uh, we just got in the studio uh, this week. We now have mounted cameras on all elephants on the battlefield. They are such a rare endangered species. Uh, we do want to make sure we don't miss a moment of the action. And there we go. Elephant getting, uh, it looks like, a hit on that stable and quickly is able to siege it. Who knows what might be going on else, elsewhere on the field, but we have some beautiful elephant action. Look at them go. They even have gold armor on their butt. That is right. The elephant butts have gold armor, with the exception of their tail has room to wiggle, 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 wiggle. Anything else they might need to do. And going after those docks, this will shut down. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, he saw we see. Okay, out of cinematic mode. It was fun. It was all fun and games till the explosive junk showed up. You don't mess around with that. Meanwhile, what's going on up here? Uh, it does look like Delhi has complete control of the water. Slowly working on those docks. Uh, looks like... What is... What's going on down here? I see red in his base. Maybe this is glitched. Maybe these are the converted villagers. They're showing up as red on the map, perhaps. Look at that. You got red there. Very strange. 
Um, but I heard an elephant, another elephant being trained. Now, Mongol, it doesn't look like he has the uh, the superior mobility currently. And here we go. This is the scary thing. If you invest too heavily in elephants, Springles are great counters, but not when you have speedy man arms charging in and taking them out. So you got to keep the Springles back. It doesn't look like he has a speed upgrade for them yet. And there we go. Springles going down. These elephants are going to do just fine. And now GUA, if his eco wasn't already uh, a net, enough of a death sentence, these elephants probably will do the trick to put this game to a close. Let's watch as these elephants wail on these, these buildings. Oh, you hear the beautiful, beautiful trumpet. You know, definitely let me know down in the chat, guys. What do you think about these elephants? Majestic beasts. Elephant cam. Do we need more elephant cam? I guess we need more elephants to be able to get more elephant cam. But moving in on that Mongol Town Center. Not a sight you see very often. Uh, it's typically the Mongols towering up your goal line and it being the end of the game. But uh, it looks like Re got a lucky break this game. Jiwei decided to try to harass the water. But he was able to just run to the other side. And really from there, I feel like this, this game has been in Delhi's hands. Continuing to run back. Let's see what else is going on on the battlefield. Oh, that's what's going on. GG is called. Beast Q takes this game with the Delhi Assaultment. That's how rank number two gets it done. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this game. And I will see you guys in the next one.